Let call to uh, order the regular council meeting of the District of Chapman and Main Second. This meeting is being recorded. 2022 at 4.37. Uh, can I have that opening statement please? Gathered state on the traditional territory of the Treaty 8 Nations to conduct the business of the District of Chatham. We do so knowing that we are privileged to serve the citizens of this community and we shall endeavor to conduct our business in their best interests. Thank you. Prior to adoption of the agenda, is there any new business? Council Deck? We can't hear it. Yeah, not better. Yes. Uh, just like the update on those, uh, the uh, flood nets that we were putting, putting in her flood mitigation nets in your call. Okay. Any other value uh, business? Can you not hear any? Adoption of the agenda? So no. Second. All those in favor? All those in favor? Carried. Minutes of the regular council meeting held on April 19, 2022. Second. <laughs> Sec, uh, moved by Councilor Beck, second by Councilor Wark. All those in favor? Okay. No delegations. Bylaws. Bylaw one, District of Chapman, Financial Plan 2022-2026. Bylaw number 1148-2022 requires adoption. Motion to adopt. I'll second. I'll second. Discussion. All those in favor? Any opposed? Recorded? Pass. Bylaw 2, District of Chapman 2022, tax rate bylaw number 1149 2022 requires adoption. Motion. Motion, motion to adopt. Second. Second. Discussion. Councilor Deck? Uh, just once again, I'd like to. Just point out that the um, our taxpayers don't appear to be getting any relief from our provincial or federal governments, and uh, I could go on and on about this about the inflation, gas prices, etc. But the, I think the, uh, the break for our taxpayers should start with us. I have a question, also. Um, I was just wondering if we've talked maybe to anybody about our cap and our eighteen dollars. Like when's the last conversation you had? Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you. Uh, we were waiting for uh, some information to come from uh, say about uh, the property. Uh, Carol, can you give us some information? That's great. So the last time we talked to the minister. Um, of municipal affairs, she asked us to talk to each of the the property owners of the satellite property. So we have done that with the exception of one that's a sale is just going through. We're waiting for the sale to, to be completed and canoe a call. So we just have two more people to talk to. So it is definitely on our schedule and we'll be talking to you to make sure you can see again this year. So UBCM, that's when, uh, once we get all our information from these uh, satellite, uh, so that we, we can and uh, making sure that we make a point of it 
and get our finance from our financial officer, take down and make sure we do all of that again. And uh, the survival of the tax base needs to be pressed upon them. That they are the ones that make the decision, not uh, satellite uh, people. We just ask them for that. And uh, that's what we're doing right now. So thank you for the question. <coughs> We've got the motion on the floor. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? Carried. Committee uh, reports. I have uh, not too much from the PRRD uh, rather than just meeting with uh, uh, the First Nations. And uh, one of the things uh, that was discussed in some some level of our charity was to uh, meet with, try to get Kelly Lake to, uh, to present because they're quite involved with their community, the community hall. And uh, that would be uh, the whole uh, PRRD, not only uh, Leonard Hebert's uh, area. So maybe that's just one of the things that came about. And uh, from the mayor, uh, in the mayor's report, I attended uh, the First Nation Major Pro Projects Coalition dinner on April 20, 24th. Uh, and I wasn't uh, scheduled to attend the conference because it wasn't on our agenda and they couldn't present it to, uh, to the council. All I got was an invitation to the dinner. So I accepted that, and uh, we passed it. I, I came to and just stayed for the Kofi conference. But I, what I did do was I went back as a guest and, uh, and wanted to make for a major announcement. And that major announcement came from the Fort Nelson First uh, Nation a major project. Uh, the, co the company Hydrogen Nat Naturally Inc. said they were working together to study the phase feasibility of project which would produce 1 million tons of hydrogen. Uh, Chief uh, Shane Gale of the First, Nation, uh, First Nations stated meaningful contribute to accelerating the hydrogen economy in BC and support clean energy transi transitions. So uh, try to get the net zero, that's what the conference was about, 20 by 2050, neutral, meaning that we were uh, use carbon and take it out of the air. So what we put in, we tried to become uh, neutral on that. Uh, this was a big major uh, project, it will be $1.2 million that uh, they were uh, looking to uh, put in place of the old uh, camper sawmill. So the, they purchased that. And uh, renew, renewable energy is involved with, uh, with uh, the hydrogen uh, natural, naturally. So they, them themselves, that's, I believe, we, uh, uh, when uh, Chief Gale talked about that, she really impressed that without the partners being involved, it doesn't move ahead. So she was very, uh, very thankful for these partners, which uh, most of what's going on in, in our communities and in the Peace River and North Peace and the uh, Northern Rockies in Port Nelson all has to do with, uh, with the discussions with First Nations. So this project here with uh, Neutral by 2050, this uh, uh, major, uh, the First Nations uh, major projects, the uh, coalition, they are pressing that, and uh, which uh, next year I would uh, make uh, make it so that uh, we can send it some counselors. It is very nice to make ourselves there because we're right in the middle of what we're doing here in the north uh, and south piece. So uh, with that, uh, and uh, the delegation there was thirteen hundred strong. So this is a big. Uh, big conference to be held uh, uh, for the first time. The coalition started five years ago, about 25 uh, uh, members attending uh, there, and then it grew to this uh, point of 
1,300 uh, member or delegations attending this conference. So it, it, it is a big one, and uh, I would recommend next year that we send uh, counselors uh, to attend so that we are part of uh, moving ahead with the uh, carbon footprint. And uh, on to the Kofi con conference. One of the big things in the Kofi conference was right off the bat transportation. And uh, one, of, one of the sponsors was CN, and we had uh, the CN uh, CEO at uh, the conference, and she spoke. And she gave us uh, an insight on what she might be thinking in moving our uh, transportation hub uh, into a different, uh, uh, I guess, different direction because she herself come from CP and then moved to PC Energy. She knows how to build and uh, making sure everything gets done, as she stated. And then she says, I work in CP, and then I'm back in, in the railroad business again, which I'm very thankful, and I will be uh, pushing this transportation and to transport lumber from your mill to the customer. So she's going to be talking about getting CN to make sure that we have enough rail cars, uh, which is very important. And then she talked a little bit about uh, the wheat and everything else that goes along with it. But uh, the Kofi conference was one of the one of the items that she had that she had on her agenda. She made that very clear. So it was very uh, very good to hear the CEO of uh, of CN to give us this kind of information. So taking that forward, it's uh, very important for Chapman because of the two sawmills that have product on their land right now, waiting to be shipped to customers. And this is what's causing us strife with, uh, with the mills operating only at a level of three days and taking downtime. So it's, uh, it is very good to, uh, to hear her. So uh, one of the things other than that is uh, from uh, the carbon uh, viewpoint was the mass timber. And they're building uh, one site on UBC, uh, a six-story mass timber building, and using that carbon footprint again. So using timber from BC, making sure that we're, uh, because it's right here in BC, that uh, we use our timber from BC. And uh, Minister of Forest, this is just a new title that she got this year. Uh, Katrine Conroy made an announcement of share of forest revenues for indigenous groups is going up, going up to 72 million, an increase from 63 million uh, for from royalties from stockage, uh, 63 million of that of the 72 million, and the rest uh, direct from BC timber sales. So uh, that's a uh, Probably about a five percent increase looks like, and uh, so that that increase there was uh, that was one of the highlights of her speech that she gave to us at uh, at the Copa Conference. Premier Morgan, he spoke uh, on the last day, and uh, right off the bat, we had our uh, pre luncheon uh, gathering, and uh, I met with him, talked with him for a bit, and I thanked him for staying out of the health uh, business and letting uh, our scientists and our doctor, uh, Dr. Bonnie Henry, take care of business and uh, leaving Minister Dix to uh, uh, take care of uh, the Minister of Health, and which was very important to us here in China. And I said to the First Nations, because they're the ones that 50% uh, of the First Nations had some outbreak at some time in their, uh, in their reserves and their territories. So he was very uh, thankful, he says thank you for that, and I invited him to Chapman. Every time I see him, I said, this is the fourth time I've talked to you, uh, Premier, and I'm inviting you again to uh, again, come to Chapman. This work is, doesn't have to be very long. I said, we'll, uh, we'll have the fireworks ready, and then he just laughs right. So anyway, <clears throat> so it was a very good conversation, and, uh, and it would be nice to have somebody come down here and uh, Kudos to Minister Beer for her attendance here in Chapman to come and just visit in the area. And uh, hopefully, we'll get a few more. And one of the, the other things that uh, came out of Premier Horgan was that he was mentioning the RCMP. Some of the RCMP, if you've noticed, 
in some of the news broadcasts, provincial provincial policing. So this might come down uh, in, the, in the near future that this might be happening. So we're, I don't know how that's going to pan out, but he mentioned that just slightly, and then when you watch the news, he's they're talking about it with uh, with uh, Minister Eby. So you know it's uh, it's out there, and he's mentioned it in just a brief note. But when you hear the news, Mr. E, Minister Eby is talking about it uh, in on BCT news or global global news. Uh, so he talked about the infrastructure on how uh, the floods, the fires, and uh, how that affects our uh, transportation hub. And then he went on to state that uh, how quickly we got that hub working. And so did the uh, CN uh, uh, CEO. She said it was 30 days after some of the tracks were washed out because we have quite a journey to go through. She said it was one month after that. So the question there is to be asked is, well, why was no longer being taken? <laughs> so it was open after a month. So anyway, this, this is some of the stuff that we gather from our conferences that we attend. And uh, it was very important that we hear them uh, at conferences, not through Zoom, because it seems like it was very important to have to see uh, Premier face-to-face -face and Katrina Conroy face-to-face then it becomes personal at that point. Not personal that they'll come down and visit us as uh, friends, and, but as municipalities and districts. So it, it was very important that uh, we attend these uh, conferences in person. So uh, with that, uh, I'd like to shout, take, give a shout out to uh, Councillor Beck's uh, grandson for helping us out with uh, some of the tagging that went on. And thank you, Councillor Beck, for that. We really appreciate it. Uh, means quite a bit to us uh, in the community of, uh, uh, like this, so thank you for that. And that's the report. Is there any other reports? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just had a quick one. I was at the uh, fire hall for the, uh, for the association meeting um, last Monday, and just uh, they had the, uh, the consultant in the very policy, Paulson, I believe it was, from FireWise, and they're just doing the uh, just a review of the fire department, I guess, in general. Those are out, but they're not quite done yet. So. I just have a question. Yeah. What did your grandson do? Like, I'm not sure. Well, the truth is, he wanted some pocket money. <laughs> I had nothing for him to do, so we went out and we, we painted over a bunch of the um, graffiti that was in town. It was pretty bad. Here. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any other reports? Yeah. Discussion items. Your Worship, can oh. I get a motion to receive those reports? I would make that motion. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Discussion, item. Discussion items. Letter from Walk and Talk 2022, dated March 1st, 2022, request for support. So I have a question. Because I'm not 100% sure what I want to do. Have we got. What? Yeah, there we go. Sorry. Yeah. So have we. Donated to this before. I know. I know. Stan has done other walks and stuff. But have we donated money, cash to yeah. these before? I don't believe so. And then I have another question. Um, in the letter, it says funds should be um, is for the mental health awareness program, but the money goes to the Tansy Friendship Center. So is it is it a program of theirs or is it a program? Bigger program. If they're just the, the conduit, so people would contribute funds and they would they would give to Tandy because they can issue a tax receipt. And then Stan's wishes that the, the funding go to each community where it's raised 
it's just going to many communities. So it can be going to take all the funding and then distribute it to the community that it needs to go to. So just following up on that, what would that look like for Chetwin? Um, contribute in what way to each community? I mean, you may not know, but I'm, I'm just wondering. Um, his wish is for it to go toward mental health support. So there are different um, institutions that provide mental health support right in Chetwin, so we go to those ones. I'm not sure exactly which ones, or maybe even the split between them. So would that include the Society for Community Living and so on, or, or I'm just, just trying to get a feel of which, uh, where it would go? Yeah, my, my understanding is that they would get a list of all of the mental health institutions, or, or institutions that provide mental health supports in Chetwin, and then distribute it. Any more discussion? Was it clear, Councillor Wesker? Yeah, sort of. Let, let's get it clear. We should clear it up if you have any. Well, I, I, I guess my, my issue is if, if people want to donate to mental, mental health, they can donate. Um, we're, we're spending taxpayers' dollars. I, I don't know if this is something that our people or our communities wants to donate to, I guess. So I guess I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to receive your information. I would second that. Discussion? I 110% support um, this cause. I'm, I'm a little unclear though, you know, um, I guess is, is it a committee? The committee isn't requesting, or the organizational group isn't requesting um, financial support for Stan to walk from Bella Coola to Winnipeg. And so if these funds are going to go back into the community and then uh, get dispersed somehow, that doesn't, yeah, I'm just, I'm unclear on that because as far as I know, you know, any mental health help in Chetwin, you would get from Northern Health. So I'm not sure how, uh, where this money would go um, and, and support the community. I, I, I'm just a little unclear on that. Yep. Uh, I'm afraid I don't have any more details myself, so I would have to go and um, ask them that question. Okay. Clear? Okay, we have uh, any more discussion on receipt for information? Uh, is this something that can come back to us with more information? I mean, again, I, I support this 110%. Uh, any mental health issue, I support. We need more support in Chapman and in the province and in the world as far as mental health. but. I know personally it's very difficult to get help in Chetwin. And so um, while I support this, I'd also like to know how this will benefit the community. I believe if uh, I'm correct that uh, the mayor can bring this back. Yeah. Okay. Okay, all those in favor for receiving this for information? Okay, Gary. Uh, just a quick note on the on Stan and Sarah uh, Surfy. Sarah Surfy uh, helped him out when he walked from Fort Saint uh, Fort Nelson to uh, Chapman, and uh, they've uh, declined to uh, assist uh, for funding this this time around from the walk from Delaware to uh, Winnipeg. So I will be uh, well, not myself, but. I will be uh, meeting with Stan and uh, the other committee to find out uh, if we can move in that direction and for assistance. Uh, they're looking for, we, uh, the committee started out looking for a mobile home 
motorhome to help them on the way because he was traveling to communities to rest, to shower, and then head back to where we finished off in a previous day and then continue on his way. So they might have, a, I believe, a camper this time around to do that. But anyway, that was one of the asks from uh, Sir Smurphy and uh, to apply that to the to the transportation part of it. So anyway, with that, we will, uh, if need be, we will, the mayor will bring it back if we find out more information. Thank you. Okay, uh, did you email? Email from Chapman Secondary School dated April 19, 2022, uh, Red Dress Day, May 5th, 2022. Make the recommendation that council approve Chetwin Secondary School's request for the BC First Peoples class at the CSS to hang up red dresses in the trees in town around the school on May 5th, 2022, for Red Dress Day to honor the missing and murdered Indigenous women in Canada. If we're uh, receiving for information, is it open for discussion? Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, so I just so I just have a question. Um, I, I I do like this idea, but I, I'm wondering if there is going to be a time limit where these dresses can stay hanging in the community. If it's, if it's that's what I would like to know. What the time frame is. Did we uh, receive any information on that matter, Carol? No, we didn't, but we could always set the time on it if we would like to. If they haven't, I can ask them, but if they haven't set one, do you want to set one? A week or two weeks? I, I, would, uh, I would just leave it up to them because uh, when, when we uh, agree to something like this, because it's pretty touching and uh, this is a touchy thing and we decide that if it's a week, it's uh, two days. You might have to If it's a week or 10 days or two weeks, and then if they give us a time, maybe we could pick one of those and say, this is where we, we need to have this because uh, we, we live in a, in a community of diverse culture, so we need to be able to address all of these. So maybe we will leave it to our First Nations or to the school to make sure that give us a time or time that you, we as a council need to make that decision on. We'll see where it goes. Maybe uh, Carol, if you could uh, contact them and give it to us. And Carol, maybe we could uh, get you to uh, uh, email us and then on the dates. Would that be sufficient for the council? And we'll decide with like four days or one week. Yeah. I think it's important to have a, a time frame. So I think you have to go to all of them and ask them what their plans are. Because yeah. I'm thinking it's one day. So I can't see them hanging up for a week or a month. But yeah, yeah I think we need to have a, need that information. Uh, yes, because uh, I've been down the road, uh, Highway 16, and they're up all the time. And I've been to Soto, and they're up uh, on Hodgson Road all the time. So we have to make sure that we're complying with our council and for our community. Okay, so let's uh, let Carol do some work and uh, she can get back to us on that. In the meantime, are we uh, going to uh, have more discussion on it, or do we need to vote on this motion, uh, Carol? Um, it doesn't give us a time limit. Yeah, it doesn't. yeah. Um, so they, they are hoping to do it on May the 5th. So if we could have a motion so that they could go ahead with their work, and then I'll find out how long they'll be up with and let everybody know. There was a motion on the floor. Yeah. Yes. There was, yes. <coughs> 
Okay. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? Okay. Carried. Discussion item number three, letter from Kelly Lake Cree Nation. Read letter of support. I'll make a motion that council receive for information. I'll second that. All those in favor? Any opposed? Okay. No correspondence. No correspondence. Information items. Council, any information items uh, you wish to? Uh, Look at it today. Uh, go ahead, I expect you to bring I-21. I-21. So I'll make a motion to receive the I-1. Sorry. Uh, make a motion to receive I-1 to I-20 and I-22. Pulling I-21. Second. Discussion? Good. Oh, I guess we're just holding it. Okay. Okay. Uh, this I 21, and it's uh, what I had mentioned uh, the premier just making this up. Uh, a little bit of information on it, and here it is here, right, uh, for us to discuss. Uh, when, when we do get this, it's going to be a big cost, I believe, to maybe not such a big cost for us, but uh, for other municipalities or cities that it's going to cost them to change over. So this discussion here is either do, does everybody get involved in uh, the process because they're, uh, they're going to be asking us. So I guess we should be prepared for that when that, because uh, they're asking for what we think might be some of the process that they're going to go through and how we are going to look at it. So the Public Safety Academy and RCP discussion on um, collective agreement, right? So we're, we're, we're right into it, I believe. So that would be some of the stuff that we're, we'll talk about with the RCP, right? <coughs> With uh, Rochelle and uh, with me, say they. Who are they? RCMP. RCMP uh, and British Columbia. Yeah. Is this working? Yep. Yeah. So, if, there, if I'm not mistaken, uh, we can always opt back to it, but uh, back to the RCMP. But if you if you go out of the um, the agreement they have right now, and then for for some reason you want to go back with you don't get to meet the um, the the cut rate that we get right now. I think it's it, it's um, it's good and I think it's gonna be pretty expensive for all small communities. I've done a done a little research on it already. It, 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 it's not gonna be free. I think we'll we'll be we'll, we'll be facing a fairly big bill in here in general right off the hall. And then and in other municipalities will it because the federal government subsidizes significantly away from the RC. Councilor, did you have anything? Uh, just to back up quite a bit, um, you know, all I see in regards to this topic is opportunity uh, to discuss RCMP collective agreement. So can we expand on that a little bit yeah. for our uh, audience and um, maybe just back up and, and talk about it a little bit? Okay, yeah, 
when the, when the global news uh, interviewed EB, they talked about the RCMP and a provincial uh, provincial police in in BC, like they had the provincial police in Ontario. So with the discussions on uh, RCMP for their negotiations, if we agreed to something that I don't know what the terms are on how long it's going to be to have the RCMP in British Columbia. And uh, the question, and when we, we talked, uh, if they give us opportunity to talk to them, is this going to affect what we do in the future with our provincial uh, police if that's where we go? Uh, do we have a binding contract or is it open? Uh, maybe there's, that's some of the questions like preparation to talk with the RCMP to make sure that if we're going to move in a direction other than just have RCMP in our area, will it be a provincial or will we part RCMP, uh, part provincial? Because they, it, it, uh, we need to be able to understand the collective agreement with the RCMP and our province. So I believe that's one of the things that uh, Councillor Deck mentioned, some of the stuff that he studied was making sure that if we're out and then we try to get back in, how much of the cost would that be? I know there's a number of uh, population that you have to pay a substantial more, and I believe it's 5,500 or 5,000? 5, is it 5,000? Okay, so that, that's a number, and we're at, uh, what is it, 20, 28? 26 or so. Okay, thank you. So, you know, and uh, we haven't increased quite a bit, so that number is not going to be there in the future. But if we have to go back in, does that cost that? Is that going to be our cost as a smaller municipality? So, we've got to make sure that uh, we have our ducks in our own, making sure that the province and the RCP aren't going to give us a big bill later on. If there's one, then let's, let's all be in that uh, same level of uh, municipalities of population, you know, versus a, how many in a city versus our municipality. So that's one of the things we could mention to them, and then we could uh, uh, send a letter to uh, Minister Eby on this and uh, tell them that, you know, can we get, can we get more information? Okay, so uh, I can gather more information. I will, uh, uh, myself and uh, staff, we will reach out to uh, Minister Levy for, for us, making sure that we have some information to send it to council. Okay. So I'll make a motion to receive I-21. Second. Second. Okay. Second by Councillor uh, Deck. Any more discussion? All is okay. 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 Reports to action. Development permit and facade improvement grant application. Tuscany Community Development Corporation. Okay, Councillor uh, Deck. Excuse. For this matter, I'll make the recommendation that Council authorize a business facade improvement program grant application for 4821 South Access Road. Count would be seen included as attachment A to this report and the issuance of development permit number 03-2022 to Sakani Community Development Corporation for an exterior renovation of the existing commercial building located at 4821 South Access Road, included with this report as attachment B, and authorize the mayor and corporate officer to execute a partnering agreement with Tescane or Sakane. Community Development Corporation for the facade improvement at 4821 South Access Road, Chapman, BC. Good second that. Discussion? 
I'm excited to see it finished. I think it's going to look amazing. Any more discussion, comments? All those in favor? Carried. Wally Crescent Southeast Sanctuary Upgrade or Sanitary Upgrade. Contract awarded. I can make I can make that recommendation that council award the Wally Crescent Southeast contract to C Chandler contract and self to construction and bid. Price of $967,936.27 plus GST. I have a second now. Discussion? Hi. Um, just because it's Celtic and we can talk about it right now, I'm just curious, did Celtic build this building? And I know they're, they do. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. Actually, there is a person that works for Celtic that did build this building, but it was under a different um, company. Okay, and they are going to build the new library. Is there anything else they've done in Chapman that we're aware of? Or, or for the district? Um, not for the district as far as I'm aware, but I know they've been very busy in town. Okay. Um, I guess the only question I have is that we're do, they're doing the sanitary sewer main and we're repaving the full length of Wabi Crescent. Are we not doing their water also, or is it just the sewer? Um, we're just doing the sewer. Uh, the water main is fully in the boulevard, so whenever we do go upgrade the water main, um, we won't have to dig up anything. Well, okay. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? Okay. Reports, no uh, reports for information, new business. Councillor Deck. Yeah, just uh, is there any update on the permits for the, um, the nets, I guess, the, uh, the green nets? Um, not so much an update on the permits. Um, our last conversation with the, the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, they wanted more information on the stream itself and any fish species in it. Um, and how suitable it was for fish to reproduce there, basically. So right now, uh, we have Plan B, well, formerly Plan B, now All North, uh, conducting a, a stream assessment and fish study on wind permit. Uh, so this was a federal grant as well, or was it a provincial grant? It was a, it was a mixture of both. Um, if I could just rephrase that, I believe it was still emergency BC, so it was provincial. And then it would be federal fisheries, so this how the nation would fit there. Yes, that's right. Good. So I just have a question. This has been, what, three years in the making? Okay, but it was approved in the beginning, so what changed to make it so complicated now? 
it wasn't ever approved by DFO. It was um, approved for us to proceed with the project, and part of the project was applying for um, the required authorizations. Is there anywhere that has any of this, any towels that have anything approved? Uh, any bird or problems? Or Um, well, I, any, any, sorry, any projects like this, sorry. Yeah. Like, is there any, anybody that has projects like these, or what, sorry, uh, is there any projects like these that are already done and complete and have passed approval from the federal regulators? I guess it's, it gets back to the same the thing that Rochelle said, it's been a pretty long time and uh, it's spread. That's not your fault. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not, you know, quote, you know, why would they hand out money and then put free on um, I'm not aware of any projects that are exactly like this. Um, I know it is fairly new technology. Um, I know that uh, other municipalities have had a difficult time with DFO lately, um, and I mean, and with specific. Uh, approvers uh, that are maybe asking for more information than has been asked in the past. Thank you. Okay, any more uh, questions on for Desiree? Okay, with that, any questions from the public, Eleanor? Is there anybody on the public? No? No. Thank you. Okay. Adjourned. Thank you.